So this is now the second part where you have um, or want to highlight a few, one or two of your own cases, right? So please, Kai, go ahead. Yes, thank you, Christoph. And um, in fact, um, we met over the internet um, uh, as we are both are providing cases, providing teaching uh, to uh, other radiologists, to students, uh, to other doctors. And um, uh, my approach is to um, to provide these cases via an app, the Berlin Case Viewer app. And the Berlin Case Viewer app is an is an app that works on an iPad. Um, uh, also works soon on an iPhone, but um, currently it's an app for the iPad. And um, we can also demonstrate some of the cases in a web mm -hmm. viewer. So I will now uh, provide um, the third case of today's video in in this uh, in this uh, iPad app. Uh, as you see, there are, it, it's um, organized in different modules, and it's not really um, constrained to musculoskeletal radiology. We provide all parts uh, of radiology, and are currently are building up our library. And here mm -hmm. I have um, provided some cases um, of ankle uh, problems as an example but today we will focus on um, the sacroiliac joints and um, i will pick one of these cases and demonstrate it um, to the audience okay go ahead so here you can see the web view of one of our modules it's titled uh, sacroiliac joint typical and not so typical findings and i think i'm gonna focus today on this case uh, number six which is uh, a female patient with long-standing back pain our approach is to uh, present uh, all types of images uh, within one case and we are also um, providing the clinical information so here you can see it's a 44 44 year old female patient with uh, infamy inflammatory back pain for more than 10 years so there's, that means there's morning stiffness for quite some time and when she starts to move it gets better and she's also have, having intermittent uh, buttock pain so this is quite uh, suggestive for axial spondylar arthritis but other findings like psoriasis or dactylitis uveitis are not uh, visible but she's H each e b27 positive which is always uh, uh, some reason to be suspicious for axial spondylar arthritis mm -hmm. and uh, we will have a look uh, on on the images of this patient so as you can see this is a, a pelvic x-ray there is uh, normal hip symphysis uh, but on the sacroiliac joints um, we see some sclerosis on mm -hmm. the lower part of both sacroiliac joints the joint space itself looks um, looks rather uh, normal so there are no erosions you can clearly see the um, the cortical uh, bone and um, we also have collected mri images of this patient and finally also a, a ct scan i would like to demonstrate now the mri images so this is a t2 weighted sequence with fat saturation as you see we are now starting in the posterior aspect of um, of this uh, scan we see the uh, spinal canal and also the nerve roots of uh, the uh, sacral uh, uh, sacral nerve roots and um, as we go to the anterior part of um, this uh, uh, stack of images we can see there is some osteitis uh, visible in um, in both parts of um, of the joint so in meaning on the sacral part and the air part and it's also a symmetric manifestation in both joints so we, we see let's uh, uh, in fact some uh, bone edema or osteitis uh, on both parts but it's only in the anterior slices it's uh, not in the middle part of the joint as you can see here and it's also not in the posterior part, so it's only in the anterior part. You can even with our app um, code these changes and you see the um, oh, findings nice. are very nicely delineated so you can learn um, by the finding and uh, switch it on and off. 
So Kai, just a quick question. This is a, like a demo case. So viewers can just make a free account and have a look at this specific case for themselves, right? Yes, they can go to the app store and download the app. And this, um, this case is part of a module that is um, uh, dealing with uh, the difficulty of imaging of the sacral joints. So in total eight cases are included as well as some uh, slides that explain our approach. And this is uh, available for about four dollars. Okay, so of course it would be advisable to also have a look on the T1. So I'm activating the split view and we will um, go through um, the T1 and the T2 fat saturated uh, in a synced uh, version. So you can see that we have the osteitis here, that we have this dark area and the osteitis is outside of this uh, dark signal area and if you look here on the T1 we can see it's it's almost no signal here so this is um, sclerotic bone this is very intense sclerosis of the bone and you can see the joint space is well preserved and outside of this sclerosis there is this osteitis and this pattern is quite typical for osteitis condensers so I'm uh, it's really important um, that the viewers of your video are getting the message that this um, intense osteitis is not sacroiditis, but it's osteitis condensans. And osteitis condensans is a mechanical condition that is um, very frequent and can occur in patients with scoliosis, in patients with uh, anatomic um, variants. It can occur in patients after delivery and also in certain uh, athletes who are doing sports either on a professional level or on a recreational level and also certain types of um, professions are more prone for osteitis condensans. Okay, going further in the case, we have also a cartilage uh, sequence, which we always like to do. This is a medic sequence, but you also can do a wipe sequence, which is a sequence available on, on scanners from Siemens. You see the cartilage very nicely. There are no erosions at all. There is this retroarticular space over here. And then we did additionally some uh, oblique axial images where you can see the osteitis also here near the sacral joint on the left and this is an oblique axial image showing the sacral bone, the sacroiliac joints, the air bone and also the, the hips and the symphysis in one image and this kind of uh, se um, sequence was um, published um, by us first about 10 or 15 years ago and we are very we, we are we are very in favor of this uh, angulation of the sequences in order to get an impression of the of the two pelvis on the of, of the connection of these bones. Coming to an end with this case, I'm I'm showing the um, the CT scan. You see, it, it is um, showing nicely that there are no erosion at all inside uh, the joint. There's this extensive sclerosis, and it's uh, it's there on on both joints. Mm -hmm. So it's also very compatible with osteitis condensans, and in fact, it is already. Um, could be diagnosed on this X-ray image because this uh, type of sclerosis is quite uh, typical for the disease. In the so later despite stage, she having a HLA B27 positive patient with inflammatory back pain, exactly. So uh, the the imaging pattern is so typical that it overrules uh, all the, uh, mm -hmm. the the info from the from the anamnesis. I think it's a very interesting case because you could easily just go ahead with that information, with that clinical information and go ahead and say this is just a sacroiliitis on both sides with some sclerosis and not even um, consider an alternative diagnosis. So that's uh, very good uh, for me also to understand that you are that confident in such a case to go ahead and say it's osteitis. Based on the, so the ASAS criteria, if you go back to that, on that MR scan, based on the image alone, you would just have to classify this as positive. But as we said in the definition, because the clinical context has to be also there and um, etc. other findings, would you report this now? Or how would you handle this in your conclusion of the report? Would you just say it's negative based on the ASAS criteria? Or would you not go into that direction at all and just say it's 
or status condensants Ely and no differential just yeah I that's that would be uh, my approach so if the if I get it the case referred by an orthopedic surgeon or a general practitioner I would say this is typical for osteitis condensans and I would not take note of the others um, criteria if the rheumatologist sends the case then I would um, add at the last sentence uh, this does not fulfill the criteria for positive okay. um, MRI just to be sure that he's not misinterpreting anything. And uh, maybe last question, could it be both? Could it be both? So here we have a symmetric pattern. We have a, 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 a patient with uh, the pain originating before the age of 45. And um, so I think um, when I started the research on sacroiliac joints, I may have also reported it as, as typical for sacroiliac joints, but um, it is um, this this example, this particular example is so typical mm -hmm. that uh, there's not the option that it's both. Okay. But there are others out there where you have mm -hmm. to be cautious and you have to discuss with the rheumatologist mm -hmm. and to come to a conclusion. That is why we are doing a clinical rounds here mm -hmm. in, in the hospital mm -hmm. and, and take the time to discuss these cases, mm -hmm. which is not always yeah. possible, yeah. as I know. Yeah. And yeah, I think uh, that's uh, all for this video. Uh, I hope this is one of many <laughs> upcoming videos with you because it's really interesting. Um, do you have anything else that you would like to share with the viewers? I think it was very uh, a very fun idea f uh, of you to to invite me to this video, and I I, I enjoyed uh, discussing the three cases with you. And I think uh, it, it is definitely something that can be done in the future again, also with other experts, and 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 will contribute um, to the to the wealth of information in on YouTube in order to get uh, MRIs uh, done correctly worldwide. <laughs>